Dear students, we are talking about the divisional organizational structures. And within that, we have discussed the matrix and the mixed organizational structure. And now we are going to talk about various different other structures which exist beyond the type of structure that is covered under the matrix and mixed organizational structures. Uh, the first one in that domain is the heterarchy. Heterarchy from its name, it is a, um, uh, it is a combination of two words, heterogeneous and archy. So uh, managing your organization in a heterogeneous way, uh, which means that there is not a hierarchy, there is heterarchy in a heterogeneous way. So there are mixed type of structures existing in your organization and not a single hierarchical structure which is in one line. Um, in a heterarchy, the multinational organization, it has different kinds of center apart from the headquarters. And why does that happen? That happens because it's not essential that a competitive advantage is available only in one country or only in the parent country. It is possible that when you are working on the global level, operating on the global level, uh, where you have different competitive advantages in different areas. For example, kisi jagah pe aap raw material bahut cost effective milta hai, kisi jagah pe aapko labor bahut cost effective milti hai. Kuch areas jo hai maha pe aapko technological advances or R&D jahaan pe bahut achhi aapki opportunities milti hain. Uske alawa, it is possible ke kuch areas mein aapki market bahut jo hai wo badi hai. For example, agar aap India mein kaam kar rahe hain ya aap Pakistan mein kaam kar rahe hain aur aap consumer goods mein kaam kar rahe hain, to you have a huge market. So uske liye aap ko, that is a competitive advantage which is not present in, let's say, a Scandinavian country or in, uh, in Finland or in France because wahan pe populations jo hain wo bahut kam hain as compared to the India-Pakistan region. So uh, that means that competitive advantage is not limited to one country and therefore uh, you may have different uh, centers, uh, power centers uh, which are driving your organization from various different forces. And your organization is not just being managed through the headquarters. In this particular type of uh, structure, uh, from HRM perspective, you have to adopt a norma normative uh, system of control for rewards and punishment rather than a hierarchical setup. So uh, you, have to go, you have got to go to a normative system. Normative system is one which operates on norms. Or वहाँ पे किसी भी जगह पे वहाँ पे culture क्या है, वहाँ की ज़रूरियात क्या हैं, वहाँ पे क्या करना चाहिए. Normative is that based on norms, what you should be doing rather than what your rules, policy, and job description says. So uh, in that kind, that is a kind of system which is more flexible, which is more open, which is more organic. And in that, you need to have a more normative system which is your norms, your culture, your tradition, your organizational traditions based on your strict hierarchy. Ke upar base karta hai. Because you are trying to tap particular competitive advantages from different places. So you can't say that the manager of the manager of the Pakistan mein manager has so much salary as much as possible. Uh, jo hai wo because that person is looking after a very large population in a consumer market uh, setup so that has to vary accordingly so normative system of uh, rewards and punishment has to be established in that kind of a hierarchy it demands skillful and experienced hr managers who can uh, create this normative system of control and reward. Uh, it's not always easy to, uh, you know, um, if you have a set of system, written down rules and policies, uh, written down system to follow, it's always easier to follow that. 
But if you are working on a more flexible, on a normative system in which you have to satisfy your employees as an HR manager, why you are going for a certain uh, way of controlling the rewards and punishment, you have to be a lot more skilled and experienced HR manager. All right, then another type of organizational structure is the transnational. Transnational is an advanced level of multinational organization. And transnational, when you call an organization a transnational organization, it means that it is operating on a global uh, strategy and global philosophy of globalization. So it's not actually, you can't, uh, you can't define the boundaries that this is a multinational and this is a transnational, but transnational is a different philosophy of looking at uh, international uh, functions and international business. In that, you actually inculcate in your organization the, the idea and the philosophy of being globally integrated and locally responsive. So a transnational combines the, uh, the dimensions of being globally integrated and locally responsive. The transnational, it also recognizes the fact that resources and responsibilities are interdependent across national, uh, uh, national boundaries. So it's not necessary that what happens in Pakistan is totally independent of what, of what happens in the neighboring countries, what happens in China or in Afghanistan or in India. Uh, it's interdependent uh, on the national boundaries. And uh, the, when you are working uh, in, a, in an international context, you have to uh, take into account all the resources which are available globally. You can't just say that the resources which are available in a particular domain, in a particular country, uh, those are, need to be tapped. You need to look at the, uh, actually, you need to look at the entire world as a source of resource and responsibilities. And that is interdependent. And then finally, uh, the third type of organization uh, structure is the networked organization. Uh, now, networked is also a same type of description as a heterarchy is, but in a heterarchy, you have a limited, you know, uh, centers of power, but you do have a very strong headquarters. But if you look at a networked organization, you can see that the headquarters, they are a part of a network and there are nodal units. Uh, and centers which exist in the boundaries of the corporate headquarters and they are almost having the same kind of power and influence on the rest of the functions, on the rest of the areas of the organization. So the corporate headquarters is just named headquarters but the power and the interdependence of the nodal units and centers, they have a huge influence on the networked organization.